So what sort of substances are we talking about? I mean, when people think cannabinoids, they think marijuana and things like that. And if we have receptors in our body, are we supposed to be ingesting something to go with those receptors to make us healthier? I mean, what? It it's, can so, be confusing, I think, for a lot of it people. Is. So the first thing is to recognize that we have our own system in our body that is we named after mm -hmm. cannabis, but it's our system. It's called the endocannabinoid system. So one of the things that I like to focus on, just like I want to focus on how to maintain a healthy brain, how to maintain a healthy heart, I want to talk about how to maintain a healthy endocannabinoid system. Mm -hmm. So the things and this is actually nice because it's not like, oh, you have to do a whole bunch of different things to have a healthy endocannabinoid, endocannabinoid system versus a healthy something else. Mm -hmm. You have to do a lot of the same things. You have to maintain your proper circadian rhythm. A lot of people don't know this. It's amazing. The and well, actually, once you know it, I guess it just becomes ingrained that everything is circadian. Sure. Everything in the body is working on the clock. Mm -hmm. And the endocannabinoid system is no different. And part of our problem now, with every kind of health problem that we're having, and they're all in some way linked to metabolism and metabolic dysfunction, is we have circadian rhythm dysfunction that is massive. Right. We have too much light, we eat at the wrong time, we don't get enough sleep, chronic stress will disrupt the, mm -hmm. the rhythms. Our microbiomes are dysbiotic, they're abnormal. The microbiome is circadian. This makes our liver abnormal and inflamed. And that's why, oh my gosh, fatty liver, epidemic. Mm -hmm. That is actually related to circadian rhythm dysfunction. Mm -hmm. The epidemic of diabetes is related. And now we are starting to understand how this relates to the endocannabinoid system. And this is so important for people to understand if they're going to maintain the health of their endocannabinoid system, the foundation of health itself. So it turns out, for example, I mentioned that the most prevalent and most powerful in terms of its action on the endocannabinoid receptors is 2-AG. Mm -hmm. And that particular one, we have now done studies on, we know it is circadian. So it's, remember, everything that's about energy production and metabolism, and the endocannabinoid system is intricately linked into that whole arena. So the endocannabinoid system is very entwined in our appetite regulation, mm. how much we eat, when we eat, it's all related. You know, in the wild, animals never overeat. And they eat at the right time, they hunt at the right time, everything in nature is done properly. And we've gone outside of nature in so many ways, you know, so everything is very messed up. Well, it turns out that 2-AG will stimulate appetite. Okay, and it works through the CB1 receptor. Now, people know from marijuana that it can give them the munchies, right? And like, what the heck is with the munchies? Why do you get the munchies? In fact, they have Marinol, which is a synthetic form of THC, and THC works predominantly on the CB1 receptor and other ways that we're just barely trying to understand now. But we know it works that way as well as other things. And CB1 receptor in the brain is very much about appetite, mm -hmm. and it increases appetite, okay? And on the CB1 receptor, 2-AG works as well. So it's, it's very complex, and we're, like I said, we're just barely learning how these work, but 2-AG is circadian, and it peaks in the earlier part of the day, sort of towards midday. Okay. And if you stay up at night, you get an artificial push, mm -hmm. and you'll have elevated levels of 2-AG during the night. You know what that gives you? The night munchies. Sure. Right, so there your appetite is dysregulated. Mm -hmm. And now we know that when you have too much, like too much of a good thing, you have too much of the endocannabinoids that are stimulating the appetite system and it becomes dysregulated with circadian rhythm dysfunction, it leads to this really large array of metabolic dysfunction mm -hmm. and you get diabetes, obesity, fatty liver, that is actually related to endocannabinoid dysfunction. So.